get back. If you help a person with food, God is going to bless you with food. That is just how it works. And it's a principle I'm trying to teach you, family. It's not about being forced to give. It's give out of your heart because you want to see the ministry grow. You want to see more people uh, 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 brought into the kingdom of God. That is your heart. And we actually, the, the word that we're going to touch on today is actually going to touch on that. It's actually a very awesome word. So today as we take up the offering, look into your heart and listen on what is in your heart. And know that when you give and your heart lays with the kingdom of God, you are storing up a treasure in heaven for yourself. So let's do our confessions. Lord today, Lord today, I can't hear you, Lord today, Lord today, I bring my offering to your house. I bring my offering to your house. You said in your word. You said in your word. Where my treasures is. Where my treasures is. My heart will also be. My heart will also be. So I bring my gift to you today. So I bring my gift to you today. Out of an act of love. Out of an act of love. From my heart. From my heart. And I thank you. And I thank you. That I am laying up a treasure in heaven. That I am laying up a treasure in heaven. I believe it. 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 And I receive it. And I receive it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and for the blind people, you may sit in front so you can read on the screen. And then we'll pray for you afterwards. With communion, what you do is you acknowledge what he did. Because it's by the works that he has done on the cross that we are set free. So when you do your communion, family, very important, this is a time we, and we'll give, um, after the bread and after the wine, we'll give each and every person a minute or two. This is just for you, in your personal capacity. Close your eyes and out of your heart, just say, God, you know what? Thank you so much. Jesus, thank you so much for what you've done. And very important communion you can take, take at your home daily. The scripture says, Jesus said to the disciples, take it daily. You can take it daily because you acknowledge and you share. And it just shows God that you really appreciate what Jesus did for us. Verse 23, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father God, we just thank your Son, Jesus Christ, for the sacrifice he did for us. For him dying on the cross, sacrificing his body so that we may be set free, Father God. He took all our sins. He took all our punishments. He took all our sicknesses. He took all our inadequities upon himself so that we might be set free, so that we might be healed, so that we might be delivered, so that we might flourish in your kingdom. Father God, we just thank you. We acknowledge you. We just uplift his great name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we just give him thanks. Amen. In the same way, he also took up the cup of the of the supper, saying, "This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you pro you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes." So you acknowledge that Jesus died and you acknowledge that he um, um, arose from dead, dead three days after. And you acknowledge that he ascended to heaven. Now by the blood, this is the covenant. It's only by the blood of Jesus Christ that our sins can be washed away. In the Old Testament they did sacrifice. The lamb was sacrificed to cover the blood. In the New Testament, Jesus died and his blood washes our sin away. He doesn't cover it, he washes it away. Father God, we just thank you for the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord God, and we acknowledge that it's only by his grace and by his blood and by the works that he did on the cross that we can receive salvation, that we can be set free of our sin, Father God. Jesus, we just acknowledge you and we give you thanks and we praise your glorious name and we just thank you for your sacrifice you did for us. And we acknowledge that everything can only be accomplished through you and by your name and by your blood. Amen. Amen. Um, before we start with the message, there is a clipboard. If I could just ask everyone just obviously to fill in their details. Um, when we will start and we'll just sing it along. 
just for us to put you on the mailing list so if there's anything happening interesting you will receive the mail if you don't want a mail don't fill in the form um, we're not going to send any spam mail or 20 mails per day we'll only be a mail once a week amen Now, family, the message this morning is what can be said about your life? And what is the purpose of your life? At the end of the day, like I said this morning when we did the old call, if you walk out here and a plane falls, like okay, well, the planes aren't flying anymore, so if a truck drives over you, what will be said about your life? What legacy are you going to leave behind? People are going to say, oh, but that Duncan, he was a drunkard. He used to drink a whiskey in a day. Or he used to beat his wife. Or he was a fornicator and he was sleeping in an hour. Or people say, Monique was a shoe businesswoman. She broke so many people's lives to climb the ladder in the corporate world. She basically stepped over people to get to the top. Is that what's going to be said to you or about you? He or she made lives or broke lives. Is that what you're going to leave behind? Is that going to be your legacy? Is that going to be what people are saying about you? Or doesn't this sound better? He or she was the most caring person I ever knew. He or she always had other people's interests at heart. They looked after people's well-being, physically and spiritually. They always spread the gospel, made sure people were fed physically and spiritually. Doesn't this sound better? Amen. Who agrees with me? This is what I want to leave behind. And not out of the place of that my name is in the books, but you know what, I want to leave behind and at the end of the day, I want to be thanked by God. Not by man, I want to be thanked by God for the works that I've done on earth. Now, according to scripture, we are given a commission. So if you become a Christian, you are given a commission by Jesus Christ himself to go out in the world and to teach people and to equip people and to give people the word. Matthew 28, 16 to 20, the Great Commission. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded to you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of age. Now God has given his disciples that authority. They went out and they taught people. They equipped people. And when they passed away, those people taught and equipped other people. And so it goes on and so it goes on and so it goes on. And now I'm standing here trying to teach you and equip you. So guess what? That commission is given to you as well. We mustn't sit in this front pews for the next 20 years and just get so fat in the spirit because we're just getting the word. No, no, family. We need to get the word. We need to learn. That 
That is why it's so important. Come with a notebook. The scriptures that I give you, go make sure I gave you the right scriptures. Go meditate on the word. It was with your meditation on the word that is how you're going to grow. That is how you're going to learn. Change your friends from bad friends to good friends, good Christian friends. Why do I say that? Because when you are a Christian and you are in bad company and you're not strong enough to handle it, those people are going to pull you down. But when you are in a company of good friends and you feel down, those good friends are going to pull you up by the word. And they're going to strengthen you. That's how you're going to grow. That is how you're going to learn. Because a year down the line, you need to teach someone. You need to equip someone. That is what it's about. Church is not about sitting in this building for the next 20 years. You are the church. This is a building. If you go to the word, Jesus says, don't forsake the gathering of the saints. He didn't say, don't forsake going to a church. Gathering. So we are gathering. It doesn't say anything about a church. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. Amen. God wants us to be like Jesus was. We need to look after these people spiritually, physically, and mentally. Now you might say, well, I don't really know about that. These are scriptures. <laughs> we'll get to the scriptures just now. Firstly, according to Jewish customs and to the uh, to the scriptures. A farmer was only allowed to harvest 90% of his harvest. He had to leave 10% of his crop for the poor people and for the strangers. It's scriptural. And you know what? I'm actually very glad in a sense I don't understand you wrongly, but with this COVID-19, you can see there is still people that care about people. Because in this time, you can see there is people arranging for food parcels, arranging, arranging to go to council, arranging just to send someone a good word and say, you know what, God will be with you. But why does it need to stop when this COVID is over? Or are we going to carry on with that? Because that is what God wants us to be like. He says in His Word, be like Christ. Strive to be Christ-like. What did Jesus do? He ministered to people. He counseled to people. He prayed for people. He set them free. He fed people. Why would it be any different for us? And we just said, we... We saw in the in the in the um, timing message. If you help someone willingly and out of your heart, you are going to be blessed. It's just how it works. That's how the cycle works. Leviticus twenty three twenty two. When you reap the harvest of your land, that's the scripture now we're going to. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the edge of your field, nor gather the gleaning of your harvest. You are to leave them for the poor and for the stranger. I am the Lord your God. So that is what God tells us. So in an indirect manner, He's telling us it's your responsibility to look after the poor. If you've got 10 loaves of bread, give someone a loaf of bread. It's your responsibility. As you can see, if we go back to the Great Commission, it says you need to go out, make disciples of men, train them. Here we can see Leviticus is not just spiritual, but it's physical as well. God wants us to care for each other physically, mentally and spiritually. Listen to this once again. Do this. 
show godly love, then you will be able to give a person the gospel. Just by the love you give someone, you can change that person. You don't need to buy the punch. You don't need to get a thank you when you help someone financially or when you counsel someone. It's not about the thanks. You're going to get thanks here in your heart when you see you make a difference in a person's life. Now this must be each and every person sitting here. This must be your goal and your dream. To touch someone at least once a year. At least one person a year. How much better if you can touch a person, a person per day? Whether it's just a friendly smile, friendly handshake, you see a boy gets me at your lunch to have me so you can solve my share. You can share my lunch. I'm like a fat, I'll survive for another month without food. What is your heart? What do you want to leave behind when you die? Uh, that person was a pig, he didn't give a two hoots about me. When he was climbing over me in the corporate ladder to get to the top, it looked like a, a lost comedy rugby. Is that what you going to leave behind? What are you going to leave behind? You know what that person, man, 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 he made a difference in my life. Why? Because he gave me first in the love. He was there for me when I was down. He prayed with me. He encouraged me. I'll never forget him. Isn't that what we need to strive for? See what the word says. Philippians 2 verse 4. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interests of others. So it's not just me saying it, it's biblical, it's in the scripture. So now you might say, well, we need to read that scripture in context. Okay, so let's do that. So let's go to the full chapter 2 of Philippians. So if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love and participation in the spirit and effect and sympathy. Complete my joy by being the same mind. So firstly here the word says so firstly here the word says we need to be the same mindset as Christ. Having the same love and being in full control a full accord of one mind. So your thinking pattern must be the same thinking pattern as Jesus. How do you do that? You meditate on the word. What you see and what you read, what goes into your two windows to your soul that you will become. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind amongst yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. We thought he was in the form of God, did not count uh, equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Okay. 
So let's quickly stop there. A servant. Jesus Christ himself was a servant. Why don't we serve people? Why don't you or me, anyone sitting here, you invite someone to your house and you just serve them? Or you go to their house and you serve them? There's no humility in it. Jesus did it. And by doing that, and by showing that, that person will see the love that you carry. Because to be a servant, you're going to humble yourself. Amen. You're going to humble yourself. Because you cannot serve someone out of pride. That is a very good nugget. Learn to serve. Being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. Even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that was above every name. So that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's have a look at another scripture. Galatians 16. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. So now you're going to say again, Oh, no, but we need to read that in context, so let's do that. Galatians 6. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore you in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself lest you be tempted. Bear one another's burden. So family, start praying for each other. It doesn't necessarily mean it needs to be a physical burden. But it can be a spiritual burden. So if you're very strong in your prayer life, pray for other people. Stop praying for yourself and pray for your friend. Because when you are going to start praying for your friend or for your neighbor, God is going to start looking after your needs. Because now you're putting someone else before you. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. So if you see God and you do what God tells you to do, He will automatically start looking after you. He will give you your desires before you even ask for it. Because you are accurate in what you're doing. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. Let the one who is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap, if we do not give up, so then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone and especially to those who are in the household of faith. Proverbs 21, 13. Whoever closes his ear the cry of the poor 
will himself call out and not be answered. Now you might say, but we won't do that. <laughs> so family, we can see that God wants us to look after each other, to give word to each other. God wants us, wants us to be actively involved in the ministry. It's not necessarily Russia, but we all connected to the same vine. Our ministry as a gathering is to spread the gospel, to pray for people, to encourage people, to feed people. Each and every person sitting here, that is your ministry that is given to you from our Lord and Saviour, our Creator. It's given to you. He's asked you, please go out there and make a difference. Amen. Amen. Let's put your close and pray. Father God, we just thank you for the opportunity that we can share your message, Lord God. I just thank you that the Holy Spirit could show us once again what is expected from us as Christians? What is expected from us as your children for the God to spread the word, to look after each other, to encourage each other? Now, Holy Spirit, I ask you please to make a change in each and every person's life so that we can strive to be Christ-like. We'll never be like Christ, but we can strive to be like Him. In the way we, we react, in the way we share the word, in the way that we look after each other, we pray that by the blood of the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.